In this video, I'm going to talk about packages. You know, JavaScript packages, the things we use every single day. Uh, but did you ever stop to learn a little bit about, uh, uh, for example, what are the differences between dependencies, dev dependencies, and peer dependencies in package.json? Or what does the tilde and the caret, car, caret characters do? And what is semantic version? What does package lock do? So yeah, in this video, I'm going to cover a few of these things so you can get more confidence on how to use them. Uh, so here I have a simple, uh, uh, package JSON file, a fictional library they're called here sample library. And right now it's on version 3.1.7. So let's talk about versions and semantic versioning. So semantic versioning is a set of rules on how to, what these numbers represent and how to update them. So there are three numbers for a reason separated by dots. The first one is what we call the major version. The middle one is what we call the minor. And the third one is what we call the patch. Uh, to explain what they mean, uh, uh, let's suppose I'm, I'm the author of this library and I'm going to release a new version. How do I increment these numbers? So the patch version is destined uh, for updates that doesn't change the way the user used the library, doesn't change the API, doesn't, 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 the user doesn't have to worry about it, and also doesn't introduce anything new. So then you update the patch version. Uh, as an example, suppose you have some bugs and you fix the bug. It didn't introduce any new features. It didn't change the way the user uses the library. It's a patch version. Or suppose you did some internal refactoring and you want to publish. So also didn't introduce any new features, didn't change the way the user uses the library. So you would go and change that from seven to eight. Now, the minor version is destined for new features. Suppose I have, say, a temperature converter library. But <laughs> what's more exciting than that? And it had it was possible to convert for Fahrenheit to Fahrenheit to Celsius and vice versa. Now introduce Kelvin. It's a new feature. So now I'm going to bump this one and I can reset this one here. Now, finally, if I did something that, pro that, that really impacts the user that's already have some code written using this library, it changes the way the user uses the library, then I have to update it, the new major version. So here, I, would, I can bump the major and reset the others. So as you can see, it's not like a celebration thing. Many people think that this is a celebration thing, right? Oh, I did so much work that I'm going to release as a new major. No, you release as a new major when uh, you have an, an API change. And that's why popular libraries like Rich UI, for example, are still on zero dot. Uh, because it didn't introduce new new API changes, it doesn't mean it's unstable. Quite the opposite, it's a super battle-tested library. Uh, but they just keep adding new features and fixing bugs, and they didn't change the API surface. Uh, same thing for React. In the beginning, React always began with zero. And I think it was on React 0 0.15, maybe, or 0 0.14, that they, people kept thinking that it was unstable because it started with a zero and they said, fine, we're just going to jump from 0 0.14 to 15.0. So you all stop complaining. So this example is like if I were a library author and I publish this as a package, how do I increment and use semantic versioning? But now if I have just a local project and I want to use packages, uh, let's take a look at this another example here. This is a sample project. And right now in my package JSON, I'm only using Lodash. So what does this characters do here. I, you might have seen those, like the caret or the tilde, they're the most common. The caret means that I accept, I'm adding some flexibility to my project. I'm saying that this is the version that I installed, but if necessary, it's okay to bump the patch version and the minor version. So if, say, Lodash has a newer version than 4.16.5, I will accept 4.16.6, 4.16.7, 4.17, and so on and so forth. The tilde is a little bit more restrictive, and it uh, deals only with the patch. Now, this means that I'm only accepting, if necessary, 4.16.6, 4.16.7, but not 4.17. So I created this project a couple months ago, and I used the caret and it installed. Let's take a look at my node modules folder and let's look for package JSON. This is Lodash and I installed exactly 4.16.5, correct? Because that's why it asked. And I created this project a couple months, months ago. Now, if we take a look at NPM and we search for Lodash, Lodash. So yeah, I can see that there are a couple different. I was on 4.16, right? 4.16.5. There's a 4.16.6 already and a bunch of 4.17s. So here's my question for you. I'm going to run npm install here again. What do you think is going to happen? Let's see. Let's do an npm install here. Okay, let's check package version again. And it installed 4.16.5.5. It didn't change the installed version. No, this is not a trick. I could have deleted my node modules folder and installed, and it would still install 4.16.5, regardless of the fact that I'm using a caret here. Well, why does this happen? Well, that's because of package lock. 
Uh, I'll jump to talk about package lock, but I'll go back to explain why these characters are still useful, even though in this case it didn't bump to a newer version. So whenever I, I install something, I do an npm install for the first time, I create this package lock file. And what package lock does, it lists all of my dependencies and the dependencies of my dependencies. Uh, this makes the installation process a little bit faster. Because every time I do an npm install, it's going to install all of my dependencies that I listed in my dependencies, dev dependencies, and so on and so forth. And it's also going to check the dependencies of my dependencies. So this is a back and forth process, right? I listed some dependency, it downloads, it checks the package lock, the package JSON of my dependencies, sees if it needs something else, and then downloads. It's a back and forth process. So package lock is created to make the make further installations quicker because now it lists everything that I need. Fortunately, load dash doesn't have any further dependencies, so that's all that it's listed here. But package lock also serves a separate a different purpose. It locks the exact version that I'm using here, and I'm using 4.16.5, despite the fact that in my dependencies I listed a carrot. And that's for a reason. In the past, before package lock existed, what would happen is that I would install a package, I, I, I would be working on my project, I would do an npm install, I would keep installing libraries, and I would be working for six months on the project. There comes, out comes a new person a new, uh, to work on this project. When they do an npm install, if there is, if there weren't for package lock, they could have a, they could end up with a completely different set of installed dependencies because I'm using the carrot and the tilde. I'm allowing them to install some variations of the library, and even though, because of semantic versioning, uh, if I'm allowing for a patch version, that shouldn't change the way I use the library, or for a minor version that shouldn't change the way I use the library, new bugs might have been introduced. Uh, or by fixing a bug, the author of the package could have broken something else. And that happens more frequently than we wished. Uh, so what would happen is that different persons would do diff npm install at different times, and in some computers the project would work, in some computers the project would not. So that's why log files were introduced. Uh, even though I'm allowing for a carrot here, when I installed this for the first time, the version was 4.16.5. So, from now on, every time I do npm install or other people do npm install, even if they delete the node modules folder, it's going to install 4.16.5. Well, why am I using this then? What's, what's the purpose of, of using this carrot? Here's the thing. Remember that I said that npm install install not only my dependencies, but the dependencies of my dependencies. Uh, let's do a trick here. I'm going to install a new library here. I'm going to do npm install. Oh, Lord. Sequelize. Now, Sequelize uh, is a node uh, package to deal with databases. It doesn't matter what it does. What, I, what it matters is that I know that it depends on Lodash and it depends on something else. So let's install it and see what happens. And, and it does have more, it does have other dependencies. Lodash doesn't have any dependencies. So let, let's see what happens. If I take a look at my node modules folder right now, it only has Lodash, right? Let's install Sequelize. So as you can see in my package JSON dependencies, it's listed with a caret at 6.14.0. Let's take a look at load uh, at my node modules here. Let's refresh. Whoa, now it has a bunch of stuff. That's because when it installed Sequelize, it took a look at pack Sequelize's package JSON, and it saw that Sequelize itself has other dependencies. So it went on and downloaded the dependencies of Sequelize. That's why at some point we end up with hundreds of folders in node modules, uh, inside node modules, because I'm downloading the dependencies of my dependencies, so on and so forth. Now, look at something interesting here, Sequelize. It depends on Lodash, but it depends on Lodash at least 4.17. Remember that on my own package JSON, I'm listing 4.16. But what happens is, because I'm allowing for a different miner, it updated my Lodash. So if now I'm I take a look at package Inside my Lodash, where is it? Here, you see that updated to 4.17.21. So in short, I use these characters like the caret and the tilde, not to say that on my next install, I'm allowing a new version. I'm using them to say to allow for flexibility when I install other libraries. If they have dependencies in common, I'm saying, if some other library that I install also uses Lodash, but it requires some new version, some newer minor or patch version than 4.16, you can update mine. And that's why 
we should use this because otherwise it would end up with duplicate versions of Lodash. So yeah, quick video, but with a bunch of things that might be a little bit confusing or not as well known. What about you? Did something in this video surprise you? Do you have something uh, that is equally surprising or important to know that I missed here? Or did I say something wrong? Uh, or do you have questions? Well, again, the discussion is going on flipgrid.com slash CassioZen, where you can participate using videos, using text, uh, and you can have a discussion so we can all get better at these. Uh, be sure to join flipgrid.com slash CassioZen. See you there.